Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're going to be reviewing Luigi's Mansion 3 for the Nintendo Switch. However, we're going to be doing it with a twist. We're going to be focusing on the experience you get on the Nintendo Switch Lite compared to the traditional Nintendo Switch when it's docked. And we're pretty much going to be doing this for every game from now on here on the channel. And if you're wondering why we're focusing on this, well, because not every game gives you the exact same experience when you go from docked mode to handheld mode. And even though this has always been true for the Nintendo Switch, it's even more important now since when you own a Nintendo Switch Lite, you actually don't have the option to dock it. And especially for someone who only owns the Nintendo Switch Lite. So I think it's pretty important from now on to focus on the experience you get in handheld mode so that you know if this is a game you should buy if you only own the Nintendo Switch Lite. So basically what we're going to be doing from now on is we're going to be going through the game, doing a general review, but I'm going to give you my view on whether the experience was diminished or even in some case even better in handheld mode than it was in dock mode. And if you're wondering, because I know I'm three weeks late on this review, uh, unfortunately I'm a small channel, I don't get the game ahead of time, and I don't feel comfortable reviewing it till I'm finished the game. So that's the time it took me to finish it and get this video ready for you guys. So even though I'm late, I hope you guys will appreciate this video and I hope you'll appreciate my thoughts on Luigi's Mansion 3 and the experience you get on the Nintendo Switch Lite. So without further ado, let's get started. So just so that you know, before we get started, basically how I played the game, I played about 30% of the game in dock mode, mostly to get the screen captures you guys are going to be seeing in this video and to get a baseline of how the experience is in dock mode. After that, I've played about 20% of the game using the Nintendo Switch Lite, but using a wireless controller. That's simply because it's the only way I can really set up comfortably to be able to record the experience on the Nintendo Switch Lite for you guys. I have to use that wireless controller to have the camera between me and the unit. And after that, the whole other 50% I played in handheld hold myself off screen, taking the occasional 30 second capture of the gameplay experience. So we'll be getting a really thorough comparison between all the different game modes. The game starts off with Luigi getting invited to a hotel and he brings his brother and friends along. However, upon arriving at the hotel, it's pretty obvious that things are off because all the staff are wearing these really odd masks. However, the group gets set up for the night in their hotel rooms and everything seems fine at that point. However, it doesn't last long because right in the middle of that first night, Luigi wakes up to find out that unfortunately the hotel has morphed into a haunted version of itself and that pretty much all the staff are ghosts. To make things worse, his friends and his brother have been trapped in paintings and he narrowly escapes getting caught himself. He winds up alone with Polterpup and only his Poltergust G00 vacuum to basically get tasked with freeing everyone from their capture and basically that's where the game sets off. Now that's pretty much it for the storyline but honestly it's more than enough because Luigi's Mansion has always been way more about gameplay than storyline and with over 14 floors to explore and discover this is one perfectly crafted game so spoiler, we're going to start with the good points, but there are a lot of them. Where better to start than the animation? I think this is pretty much the best animation I've ever seen on the Nintendo Switch. And I'm actually disappointed it didn't get nominated for Game of the Year on the animation section. Honestly, it's on par with the a Pixar animation. When you're watching the FMVs, you would think you're watching a Pixar movie when you're playing this game. And it's not only for the FMV sections, the in-game animations are some of the smoothest and most beautiful I've ever seen on the Nintendo Switch. Sometimes I'm wondering how this game actually works because there's no frame drops, the animation is smooth, and there's sometimes a lot of moving objects on the screen at the same time. Like there's one section at one point where you're fighting over 20 ghosts at the same time, and even though during those sections there's no frame drops. And to bring that experience over to the Switch Lite, I really thought the Switch Lite wasn't going to be able to handle those sections, but no, 
it took it in strides and you don't even see any frame drops even in handheld mode on a Switch Lite. So the game, I don't know how they did it, but they managed to get some of the smoothest animation ever seen on the Switch and port it over to this game and actually have it work in handheld mode without any frame drops. It's actually in my opinion, a marvel to have that on the Nintendo Switch and looking as good as it does. Not only that, but I was expecting some scaling issues where it would cause some kind of like claustrophobic effect on the Nintendo Switch Lite. But honestly, there were none to be had. Even in the boss fights, in the larger open areas, you weren't feeling like you were missing out or any objects weren't in sufficient detail where you couldn't interact with them on the Nintendo Switch Lite. The game has been perfectly scaled to either work in dock mode or in handheld mode and overall give you the same experience. Now, let's talk about those environments. With over 14 floors to discover, I was expecting to feel some redundancy at some point, but there was none to be had. Each floor felt fresh and new with different themes. You go from a pirate level to an ancient Egypt level to even a movie set and all the levels are perfectly original and they feel fresh and new. And on top of that, Luigi pretty much only has five abilities in this game, and each floor would find a new and interesting way to have you use these abilities to interact with the floors and basically keep solving puzzles and going on in the game. Honestly, from start to finish all the way to the last floor, every experience was really, like I said, fresh and new, and that is really rare for a game. And the last point on those environments that I sort of forgot previously is there's so much possible interaction with the environments, it will actually surprise you at every turn just what is possible. And this control scheme and abilities were perfectly at home on the Switch Lite. Basically, you don't feel like you're missing out on anything to be playing with the buttons on the Switch Lite compared to a Pro Controller. Like I said in my previous review of the Switch Lite, some games have you screaming to use a Pro Controller just because of their nature, Well, Luigi's Mansion 3 is not one of those. You can play from start to finish directly on the Switch Lite with the control scheme that they set up and you will never feel like you need to grab that Pro Controller to be able to finish a challenge or solve a puzzle. So we have great visuals, great gameplay, and good control scheme and pretty much content that feels fresh and new from the start to the end of the game. And all this translates perfectly to the Switch Lite. You could ask yourself, is there anything I didn't like? Well, yes, but not much and they aren't major issues. But let's go through a couple of them since this is a review. The first thing I'd like to talk about is all the coins you're going to collect in this game. You spend a lot of your time in this game collecting coins and money. And honestly, it's fun and innovative the way you get to suck up these coins and collect them and whatnot. The only down point is there's not really much to spend them on. Basically, all they're used for is buying lives, which are these sort of dog bone things, or helping you to find the secret gems and booze that are hidden on each level. These aren't bad options, it's just that you get way more money than you're ever probably going to spend on these things by the time you finish the game. It just feels like it's a missed opportunity where they could have really integrated maybe a couple of upgrades or a couple of things to really spend this money on, where by the end of the game you don't feel like you spend half of the time collecting useless coins. The second tiny point are actually those hidden gems on each level. Basically, each level has six hidden gems that you can find as sort of a side quest. The only downside is other than a achievement, collecting the gems don't really give you anything. And once again, it's not a bad thing, but it does feel like a missed opportunity where there could have been some kind of payoff at the end of the game or at the end of each floor if you did manage to find all the gems. And lastly, and I'm really grasping for, for bad things to say about this game because, like I said, there really isn't much. 
Uh, there were two occasions in the game where you sort of do these revisits of previous levels. And with such fresh and innovative designs on each level, uh, these revisits sort of just felt unneeded. And honestly, they ended up just being my least favorite sections of the game. They weren't annoying, but they just ended up, like I said, being my least favorite. So I would have just foregone them if at all possible. Overall, the only reason I can complain about such minor points is because Nintendo delivered and spoiled us with such an incredible game that is just one heck of a lot of fun. Honestly, I can recommend Luigi's Mansion for anyone, young or old, that's played a previous Luigi's game or not. Luigi's Mansion is just an awesome game. Nintendo really did just deliver us another top-notch game. And not to beat a dead horse on this point, but after seeing Luigi's Mansion run on both the Switch and the Switch Lite, I really wonder what happened with Link's Awakening and the frame rate issues, because Luigi's Mansion seems like it would push the system way harder than that other game, and it doesn't have the issues that Link's Awakening had. So it's just food for thought that I'm throwing out there. I, I really am a little more disappointed in Link's Awakening, although I, I love that game. I'm a little bit more disappointed after seeing what they managed to do with Luigi's Mansion. So, in short, to answer this video's question, yes, the Switch Lite can handle Luigi's Mansion, and you won't really lose out on anything on the overall experience by playing on your Switch Lite, and even after using all three modes, I actually preferred playing on my Nintendo Switch Lite than I did in dock mode. Oh, and by the way, at max brightness, I was managing to get about four hours of gameplay on the Nintendo Switch Lite, and if you reduce the brightness, you can probably get another, another 30 minutes to an hour out of your console, depending on how low you can lower that brightness. So, I hope you all liked this video. Now, I'm going to leave an affiliate link down below. If you want to pick up the game itself or a Nintendo Switch Lite, I'm going to be link leaving links down below. So, please leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you didn't like this video, well, that's perfectly fine. And how about you leave in the comments what you didn't like about it so I can maybe make it ne better for next time. And I hope I'll catch you guys in my next video.